All right, so check this out. We've got a trig board set up here, but instead of waking it up with a digital input, I wanted to wake it up using a light sensor of some kind. So I came up with this little circuit here that wakes the trig board up, and right now it's it's kind of dark in the room, and it's pulling about eh, 12 and a half microamps. Now it's not fully dark in this room, so if I put my hand over the light sensor circuit, we get even lower current, even less than one microamp there. So when we go and uh, flip the switch, it automatically wakes the trig board up, and now we can connect to the cloud and send and receive data, do whatever we want to do. And in this case, it's actually going to be sitting in a bathroom and will show you your water usage in real time. It connects to my water meter project. Yeah, and then we can also monitor that light sensor on the trig board. So when the light turns off, we can kill power to the trig board and go back to that single digit microamp current draw. So this will be kind of a quick video here because I just want to share with you that circuit which, by the way, can be used for any application that you might need to wake up from a light source like, you know, hook that circuit up to an interrupt pin on your processor to wake it up from a deep sleep state. Maybe you want to activate some other circuit, turn a relay on, you know, do whatever you want. So it's kind of universal in that way. And the first thing I thought about using was a photocell which is basically just a resistor that changes its resistance based on light. So you'd have some kind of voltage divider set up, maybe that feeds into a comparator, and then you set your threshold for where you want it to actually activate. Now the problem with this is it's a voltage divider, so you've got these two resistors here to ground, and they are always going to be pulling current. And it's not like we're in the mega ohms here, we're going to be in the hundreds of K which is still a pretty high resistance, but even so, that's pulling, you know, potentially tens of microamps all the time from your battery. Now, the other way I would have done it is to use a photodiode or a phototransistor, but I didn't have any of those laying around, so I decided to try something else, which I haven't ever really experimented with, but I thought this was really cool here. So you can use a regular LED like this, and this, when you shine light on it, will generate some current there, a tiny, tiny, tiny bit of current. So it's actu actually acting in reverse. So this is a pretty common circuit here, but uh, I never really experimented with it. I'm glad I did because this is very cool. So basically, this is just a light switch where we've got the LED here generates that tiny, tiny bit of current when you shine light on it and then it's double amplified through this Darlington setup here. So this is actually just two standard NPN transistors here hooked up to one another in a Darlington configuration to act as a major amplifier for this tiny current here, which pulls this down to ground. Now this 10 ohm 100 microfarad combination right here is optional, but for the trig board input, it's needed because we need to filter this out. So when this snaps down to ground, we actually need to uh, sink all of the current out of the 100 microfarad capacitor down. And that's the point of this 10 ohm resistor here to current limit that all the way down to, to zero volts there and then slowly charge back up through the 10K resistor. So gives us a little bit of a filter input on our sensor input. But if you wanted to build this up on your own, just, you know, a couple transistors there, 10K pull-up, and an LED. Yeah, so then just VBAT is whatever the battery voltage is out here. So like 3.4 volts to 4.2 volts. And you can experiment with it. Just build this piece here of the circuit and then this is your digital output from the light sensor. So when you shine light on this LED, it'll pull this output to ground. Now when it's on, of course, you're going to have leakage current through the 10K resistor. And there's nothing you can do about that uh, in this case. So, you know, but in this, of course, in this uh, scenario here, I'm actually keeping the trig board on while there's light. But if I wanted to send a push notification out just one time when the light is flipped on, then we're going to have this 10K leakage current always there once you know I actually kill power to the trig board. So that's one disadvantage of this circuit. And you know the one interesting thing about this is that different LEDs will give you different results. This is actually sort of an orangish, uh, yellowish kind of LED. I don't really know how to explain it, but 
I had a whole bunch of these from years and years ago, and up, oh, I just broke a wire off there. And uh, this this LED actually gave me the best results. And also, you'd want to uh, experiment with this pull-up resistor here. A 10K worked out pretty good. And uh, you could also, um, speaking of the LED, you can try different colors, like a red LED, green LED, blue LED. You can even try IR LEDs, too. So you can play around with that. And uh, anyway, that's all I really wanted to talk about. So I'll have links here in the description below to this page and everything about the trig board. Thanks for watching.